Well, first off, Dr. Reese, thank you for coming on here. Thank you. So, would you be able to give us a little bit about who you are and what you do and really anything else that you want to give us? And then, yeah, we can go from mm. there. I'm pretty much a nobody going nowhere. <laughs> I feel that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, here in the material world, I'm a, a head to toe healer that helps people escape the medical system. Mm. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Now, where does this all come from for you? Were you originally in the system and then you realized uh, the faults of the system? Yeah, in my late 20s, I had some health issues, went to my doctor thinking that he's a mechanic <laughs> and I'm a car. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was wrong. Yeah. And I just realized that it was a, a scam, for a lack of a better word. Yeah. And I realized I had to heal myself and... Once I did that, I become, became passionate about it, just like most healers. And boom, next thing you know, I had a PhD. <laughs> so what did you realize was a scam about it? And what do you want to renew in the, um, in the area of healing? As in, like, what do you want to do differently than the system provides? What I, the first thing I realized was the machines, actually. Because at the time, I had a potential heart issue. Mm -hmm. Turns out there was nothing wrong with it, but that's what we were guessing. And I went through so many tests. I mean, this is a long, this is, I was 28 years old. This is a long time ago. And I would ask the nurses and technicians, I'd be like, how, how much does this thing cost? They'd be like, oh, this was $2 million. And I'm like, well, wait a second. Well, how many people do you have to run through this to make your money back? And oh, how many yeah. days does it take? And that's really where my research started. And then, you know, drugs are just kind of obvious. So, yeah. So then what, uh, what, uh, what do you want to go from there? As in like, uh, so you realize it's sort of a business right? <laughs> yeah. So what is the renewal that you brought to this whole process of healing? Like, how do you approach it differently than the traditional way? Yeah, well, I take a head to toe approach. That's a term that I coined. Originally, it was a holistic thing, but nobody understands what holistic means anymore. <laughs> what does it mean? Holistic is supposed to be full body mind and soul you know but yeah. people understand head to toe a lot better yeah i like that more relatable <laughs> and you know i had a 10-year career helping people and then i had another big realization and epiphany about the musculoskeletal system and so once i learned the musculoskeletal system that's when i was able to connect the dots because when your pelvis is out of alignment or your shoulders or, you know, your neck isn't in alignment, all these symptoms can occur. And so it's bigger than just food. Mm. People are usually stuck on food. And so I just came to the realization that there's three sections of the body. And so the way I teach it is that your body's like a vehicle. That's the musculoskeletal system. That's what you walk around earth with. This is your structure. But then you have to put fuel in the vehicle. That's your nutrition. But here's a catch. Every vehicle has an onboard computer. And that's right here. Uh huh. And so now the mind can affect the body. Mm -hmm. And so I also teach mindfulness training. People have different words for it. I call it mindfulness training. Call it inner work. Call it, you know, cognitive behavior therapy. There's so many terms. 
But ultimately, we do have a subconscious mind that's hooked up to this circuit breaker we call a spine. And then everything mm-hmm. shoots out from there. So if you have a pain in your left knee, it could be from the musculoskeletal system, it could be from the nutrition, or it could be from the mind, or it could be two of the three, or it could be three of the three. But either way, we're going to get after it from head to toe. And that's what I'm trying to teach the world. I see. So it's seeing the body as one system, a system of systems that all intermingle, rather yes. than just like, I feel as though, and correct me if I'm wrong, the traditional health uh orientation of um you know diagnosis and treatment it's just like pinpointing one part of that system and not relating it to any of the other parts as in it's Mm. like uh you know you just treat that whatever is going on whatever the condition is and it doesn't relate to the mind or the energy that you're putting into your body so if you say that's like the big difference is like treating whatever the ailment is as a as part of the system of the vehicle of the body rather than just like focusing on that one thing and trying to treat that one thing it's like holistic is more of like a integration of the entire system essentially yeah we zoom out instead zoom of zoom out in. i like that that's good <laughs> that's good i like that if yeah. you go to the medical monopoly and you have pain in your left knee you're going to be sent to a specialist And the specialist is going to zoom in. He's not Mm. going to look at your hips. He's not going to look at your nutrition. He's not going to look at the position of your neck. We Mm. zoom out and look at the body from head to toe. And that's what gives the advantage. And that's why we have so many testimonies. In fact, we have the most testimonies on video in the history of cameras. So, I mean, just people just healing over and over and over again and you know you get someone on camera who heals from seven eight nine ten different symptoms yeah it's not just my left knee it's Mm -hmm. the left knee and the migraines it's the Mm -hmm. left knee and the fibromyalgia it's the left knee and the depression it's the left knee and the eyesight it's the left knee and the bunions it's the left knee and the gut condition it's the whole thing Mm. yeah that's wonderful yeah they all play a part right all of our symptoms play a part yeah Mm. yeah symptoms are just alerts your body is just talking to you your body is screaming it's saying change change please change Mm. now what's the most powerful change you think that is relatable for all of us to institute into our lives would you say it's our diet or um is it like a multi-pronged approach like how can we all approach this head to toe healing right now like if we wanted to what would you say would be like the top three or five changes we could all make get off what i call the poor four foods that's gluten that's oils that's fried that's fake we have people healing all over the world that's never given us a dime they just read my book they saw me write that they get off the four foods and their body just starts changing immediately. Mm. That's probably the best first step anyone can make is just taking these four foods out. Mm -hmm. And I have a cookbook to help people with that too, if they needed it, you know? Mm. That's awesome. Yeah. I like to say, simplify your food, right? The more ingredients usually has a correlation to, uh, the, (laughs) the more unhealthy it can be. I'm not saying it's always like that, but usually, I find that's how it is to keep it in a simple manner. You want to keep your food very simple, very whole, organic, and yeah, just real. Essentially, just real. Just go back to real foods. I think the case is that we're all just eating just fake stuff, just chemicals that we don't even know how to pronounce. That's right. And that's what's causing disease. So yeah, I like to say just keep your food simple, closest to the earth, and with as least amount of ingredients as possible. So yeah. That's solid. What was the four again? Gluten. Sorry. Yep. Oils. Yep. Fried. And fake. Mm. Now, do you prescribe to like seed oils and how bad seed oils are? 
All oils. Or you're saying all oils. Really? Even all like oil. the, okay, even like olive oil and coconut oil? So just no yep. oil at all? No oils at all because it oxidizes with the air. Mm -hmm. Which just causes like, oxidation in your body? That's correct. But that's correct. we need some fats, don't we? You do need fats, but you want to eat whole fats like avocados and butter and beef and such. Okay, so you're not saying totally get rid of oils. You're just saying the right oils in the right amount? No, I'm saying all oils. Fat is fine, but not oils. Oh, there's a difference. Okay, see, in my head, for some reason, they're the same thing. So you're saying, like, so beef tallow, is that it's okay? Fine. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. But when it's concentrated in an oil form, that's when it can get dangerous is what you're saying? That's correct. It's not a whole oh. food. And I gotcha. I gotcha. Because the food has been opened, now it's oxidizing with the air, and that's oh. going to create free radical damage. Now, here's a little experiment that you can do or your listeners can do. Go look at a bottle of oil, even that's not been opened. You'll see a pocket of air at the top. Mm. So it's bathing in the air. It's trapped in oxygen, and it's just going to sit there and it's going to get rancid and rancid and rancid. And you're turning something like a salad into a weapon of mass destruction. Damn. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And this is why so many, this is a huge reason why cardiovascular dis-ease is such a big, oh, well, it's the number one cause of death in the world. Mm-hmm. And yeah. fried food is just a heightened version of that. Because mm -hmm. fried is typically in oils. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a mess. So what would you recommend for oils for us to use for cooking then? Just use butter. It's plain or butter. Ghee, or ghee or tallow. Yep. You can't mm -hmm. be... You, you know, you can't, you can't be vegan to be healthy. <laughs> yeah, that's controversial. And there's probably a lot of vegan people listening to this, but I have come to realize that as well. I mean, no, nah, it's, there's nothing, there's nothing. I used to be vegan. I think everyone's been vegan for at least a few weeks in their life. <laughs> yeah. And it, We've all gone through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's just a harsh reality, man. Mm -hmm. And I know that a lot of people don't want to harm the animals, but. Truly, I tell you, that's just the way God set it up, man. Yeah. There's no way around it. Mm -hmm. I had a yeah. big realization one day when I had an ant infestation in my cabinets. And I was vegan at the time. And I'm like, okay, what do I do? <laughs> mm, that's a sign. I was an ethical vegan, like for real, like no leather belts, nothing. Yeah. And it was a big, harsh reality, man. And then the other harsh reality I had was I was gardening and I had a trellis and I was maneuvering the vine of a melon to, you know, to climb through the trellis and it bit me. <laughs> oh, yeah. It bit me like it, it protected itself and it like spiked up. And I, I literally had blood. I mean, it wasn't a lot of blood, but I'm looking at my hand and I'm like, oh my gosh, the plant bit me. And it's like, all right, the plants are alive too. So there's no way you can be, you can be as vegan as the green as grass. You're still a killer. Mm, yeah, exactly. Yeah, man. I think that's just the, the cycle. Like you said, that's just the way that it was set up by God and everything has its place in the hierarchy of life you know it's a circle order, of life yeah. yep it's yeah a circle of life man and you know a lot of uh people who go down the spiritual path end up not eating animals and they end up very unhealthy oh i felt that yeah you can just feel the difference it's night and day i was vegan probably uh i don't know three four years ago and then i started to eat whole foods organic meat uh Still use olive oil, although after this conversation, I might not use olive oil anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I just overall increased and simplified my diet from um, veganism and just night and day difference of how I feel. So much more energy, so much more just, um, just there's a foundation of feeling good. I don't know how to explain it. It's just, you'll feel the difference if you really go from 
um, very quickly. If you go from a vegan diet into an animal-based diet, you will 100% feel the difference in your body. And yeah, I do, because there's still a part of me that's like, but I'm killing animals, you know, indirectly I'm killing animals, but I just think that's the way of things, you know, and from an esoteric sense, if you can look at it as like, it's all the one thing, it's all one life. It's almost beautiful that life sustains itself by eating life. And I don't know if that's cope. Maybe that's just some kind of weird justification in my head. But if mm. you don't look at us as like separate beings, as like we're humans and we're preying on cows or we're preying on pigs or whatever, we just look at organisms as like, they're like an offering to us. They're offering their life and their energy for that's us. Right. It's a, You know, so it's a different way to look at it. It's almost like beautiful in that way. Like this one life sustains itself by consuming itself. And it's kind of beautiful in that way. Um, so that's is. how I... Yeah. My favorite culture to study in order to really understand what you just said is indigenous cultures, mm -hmm. Native Americans and such. I mean, they really appreciated the earth and, and they used animals for everything, not just food. Yeah. For their teepees, for their clothes. Yeah. For everything. Yeah. Honoring the animal, right? And everything that it grants us honoring it almost like this uh just like a divine sacrifice that's yes. something we've lost too and the we were disconnected from the energy that we get from animals but yeah in studying the indigenous ways it's like they they thought of it as i said before like an offering to them you know it's like you almost bow down to the cow for yeah, yeah. living for you so you could sustain yeah. you know so yeah it's beautiful in that way actually but it's it's hard to really be able to see it like that if you look at it from just like um, the vegan point of view, it's like I'm killing the animal. You have to zoom out, as you said, in the same thing as head to toe. You have to zoom out and look mm -hmm. at this whole organism, this whole system of life on Earth and how it sustains itself in the form of energy. And then you'll be able to understand why it's not so bad after all what we're doing with the animals, you know? It's an ecosystem. Yeah. Yeah. Everything is a system. It's just in the body. And in the cosmic body, it's systems upon systems that play into each other. And if you could look at life like that, your own life, but also the universe as just like systems upon systems upon systems that play into the one system. Um, I don't know. It's just like it'll it'll allow one to understand what's really going on here. The Tao, God's plan, you could say. Like it, there, there is some kind of order here. It's not all chaos. There's some kind of order and you can attune yourself to the order or not. But if you attune yourself to the order, the system that you are in and are of, you'll be healthier. Ultimately, you won't suffer yes. as much. And that's what I think you're trying to uh, get across to the world is like, you have to get with the program, <laughs> get with the program that was instituted and prescribed for us. And uh, yeah, we're totally off our rocker in, in that way in terms of health, for sure. So it's great that people out there um, like you, that people like you are out there spreading the good word. Um, I don't know how many others are out there like you, but uh, yeah. just one is enough. <laughs> it's all very divine. Yeah, man. Even my journey and how I'm even here right now is divine. It's, um, mm. it's, you know, I had another career, you know, like there's no way that you could have came to 15 year old Kevin or even 25 year old Kevin and say, Hey, you're going to end up a healer and you're going to have followers and fans all across the world and you're going to write books and you're going to help people get healthy. I yeah. would have been like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't choose any of this. Exactly. Yeah. You just kind of surrendered to something greater. It just happened and mm -hmm. I just followed the path. So, yeah, where did this all come from for you then? How did you, I think we kind of touched upon it in the beginning a little bit, but where did you like, get the essence to follow this path of healing and uh yeah why is there like a pull something in you that you follow is it your soul is it god intuition that led you down this path well at the time it was just survival i was trying to get healthy from I my see. health concerns when i was 28 and that's when i realized that the medical system was corrupt and i i just I just followed my new passion. Yeah. That's all I really did. And 
you know, I was, I was on the radio. I was a radio personality. And I was doing health for two years while I was on the radio. So I had two kind of careers going at the same time for two years. Mm. And then I eventually made a decision to leave. Mm. What happened was, and I'll share this on your podcast because you have a more spiritually inclined podcast. I had an incident where my social media was hijacked. This is in 2011. And it shot me into a very dark place because I was betrayed by someone. And back in 2011, there was no protocols for if you get hacked or hijacked. You know, now there's protocols, right? People get hacked all the time on their Facebook or whatever. Mm -hmm. Back then it was like, oh my gosh. And all of my hard work was like taken down. My whole YouTube channel was taken down. Wow. Just imagine your YouTube channel taken down mm. by someone you know. And you can't sign in. You're just, it's gone. Yeah. Wow. So my mind turned so dark. Oh, yeah. And it went right to revenge. It went right to like a mobster. <laughs> mm -hmm. And... It was just so dark. And then all of a sudden, um, I collapsed onto the couch. And my mind stopped. And I became what they call blissed out. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sitting there, I'm laughing like, like a Joker movie, you know? And it's just all funny to me. Ha, 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 ha. I was so upset over something so stupid. Ah, ha, ha. And I'm just like, this is amazing. I'm like, this is amazing. What? And then, you know, a few hours later, I, the mind came back. And it was back to being dark. And I'm like, I don't get it. What, what, what was that? Mm. And that was when... I set off on a journey to figure out what happened to me. Now, years later, I learned that it's called a Satori, you know, which is a Zen tradition for a small awakening. Mm -hmm. And that led me to an ashram. I went to an ashram in New York. I didn't even know what an ashram was, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting there trying to retreat from the world. And that's where I met my, I call him uh, my spiritual father. I met a man who was very advanced. And he gave me the answers that I was looking for. And the answers only happened because I was asking questions. Mm -hmm. and he didn't offer anything. And it was a happy accident. He worked at the ashram. He was doing trade for hire. You know, he was, he was cleaning the toilets, taking out the garbage. He was working on the campus in order for room and board. But the staff building was shut down, renovations or whatever. And he ended up in the same dorm room as me. Mm. It was just a happy accident. <laughs> Yeah. And so I could, I could feel this man's presence. You know, I could just feel something. And it was, it was wild. It was a week that I, it was the most transformative week of my life. And he's the one, you know, I would talk about health stuff and he was the one that, you know, maybe this is your path. Maybe you're going to become some big influential health teacher and this that and the other and this is back in 2012 you know and um i got his email and stayed in contact with him for seven years so i essentially had a mentor and he knew everything man he knew the he knew the bible 
He knew the Tao Te Ching. He knew the Bhagavad Gita. He, he knew uh, the Dhammapada. You know, he, he knew everything. It's like he studied everything. And it was like everything I was looking for was right there. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I had someone to ask questions to. And um, it was a very transformative thing. Yeah. And wow. one, one day we were talking and he just said, look, uh, this is going to be our last communication. And um, our time together is over. And if you want to know where all the information I've given you is, then you can only find it in silence. And he disappeared. <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> oh, man. Sounds like you met Jesus. I call him the blue antelope. <laughs> and I was so dumbfounded because I found someone who had discovered his own inner peace. Mm. Mm -hmm. And he had nothing. He had no money. He had a bag of clothes, one bag, no car, no phone. The reason why I got his email is because I have your phone number. I don't have a phone. <laughs> you know? So it, I was dumbfounded, and, and that's when my perspective shifted. Mm. That there's mm. more to this than being successful in money or status. Yeah. This man had inner peace. Mm. Yeah, it, right? Yeah, wow. And I, and I said, I want that. <laughs> yeah. And so what happened is he left. And that's what inspired me to work a little harder because it was like seven years of trying to get my health career off the ground, you know? Mm. Um, I quit radio. As soon as I got home from the ashram, I quit radio. On the air, I might add. Hmm. And I set off on this journey to be a health guru. But behind the scenes, I was working on my mindfulness and trying to get to where this, this guy was, you know? Mm. And then when mm -hmm. he left, I just started studying and studying and studying and finding other teachers. And then in 2018, I had another experience where I was meditating and uh, I started seeing colors and stuff. And I'm like, what is this? And I'm like, nah, it's the, it's the light. So I'm like, all right, let me put my hand on my eyes, you know, make sure there's no light getting in. And I'm like, oh, I still see it. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. and then that night i went to bed and um i don't know man I, it was like a paralysis type thing i couldn't move but i was awake and uh and my whole body started vibrating and uh it was scary and i'm just like you know whatever is happening just whatever if this is death fine I just let go. I let go. And uh, the next morning, everything was a little different. So things slowed down a little bit. And uh, my speech started to slow down. And I started talking softer. If you look at my old videos, I'm very energetic. Mm -hmm. Very hands moving. I'm just animated. And all of a sudden, everything just came way down. That's in 2018. So that's, you know, six or seven years after I met that guy. So this is a long journey. Um, and then in 2021, I ended up going through what's called Dark Night of the Soul. Most people call it that. Mm -hmm. And that was just a disaster. It's a beautiful disaster, but it was a disaster. Mm. And that lasted seven months. And at the end of the seven months, I had another satori uh, my mind stopped again and it was the same thing that happened in 2011 and i'm like this is wild <laughs> you know 2011 2021 you know it's 10 years mm. and you know that's when i decided that i was gonna um go harder at this health teacher thing and 
and I was going to bring my new way of speaking to social media, and I did. And within five months, I went five or six months, I went viral and I became known all over the world. And I mean, that's the short story. So this is, it's very divine, as I said. I didn't choose any of this. It's just like, it's very wild. And, you know, now I, I get messages from people who say that, you know, they go to sleep to my videos or wow. my videos help their anxiety or, or whatever. And it's because of the way I'm speaking. Mm -hmm. It's the spaciousness in the communication. And, so it stands out from the other health people because they're usually pretty energetic. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. I think that comes from your mind training, the mindfulness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And being able to convey this information with ease. It's very special to be able to do that for sure. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like a, a testament. You know, if you can walk the walk and literally talk the talk, you know, from this place of calm, it means something to people for sure. Yeah. I also want to note too on meeting your teacher. I think that's one of the most powerful things and transformative things we can do for ourselves. Not that we do it. it, might just be a happy accident. Like you said, it might just be grace, but that can be bestowed upon us is like being in the presence of somebody that knows per se, you know, and, uh, yeah, something like rubs off, I feel like there is a transmission or some kind of initiation that happens if one is open enough to their offering that I don't think ever leaves you. There's something in a realized being that it's like an ability that they're able to bestow upon others. Like I said, if they're available, that is, um, it goes beyond words. It's like something they print into your soul man i feel that when i come on here through time and space with others i'm like wow they got they're doing something to me <laughs> they're doing something something's going on and it's like mm. it's beyond what they're saying it's like imbued in what they're saying if that makes sense it's like beyond the symbols it's like how one says it it's like something that's in the flavor of their words that is uh, magical to say the least so yeah, I guess point of my story is find the others, find the other wise beings out there and uh, they will guide you into this whole process of healing and peace and stillness within. That's right. That's right. Yeah. One of my mentors was on your show, actually. Who's that? Oh, is it Yeah, mm -hmm. I've seen that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's one of them. Yeah, he's one of them where I've, uh, I had a conversation. I'm like, yeah, this guy knows. <laughs> 100 he is realized there's some people it's so apparent it's like oh yeah i get it and as we spoke of before it's in the presence it's how they speak it's just like in the energy you know it's in the vibration you can't fake it either you know i like to say you can't fake being real <laughs> real is apparent real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. when i was yeah. going through my dark night of the soul experience i contacted vishrant mm. And I'm like, explained everything. And he goes, yeah, sounds like that's what it is, you know, confirmed it. And I'm like, all right, well, what do I do? And he's like, <laughs> he goes, make it okay forever. I'm like, what? <laughs> forever? <laughs> Dad, this is horrible. What do you mean forever? And he's like, yeah, just make it okay forever. I'm like, are you saying this could be forever? And he's like, yeah, why not? Why couldn't it be? And I'm like, because I'm suffering. And he's like, oh, it could be forever. You know, and it was just like such a guru thing to say. <laughs> yeah, right. right. Mm. But, you know, when I was about to start my new enterprise here in 2022, that's when I wrote my book, Peace Over Pain. And I had a plan. And I asked Vishram, we were talking on a FaceTime call, and I said, I'm about to start this business, and do you think that someone can become realized or awakened while they're doing business? 
And he looks at me and he goes, probably not. And I'm like, well, you said probably. And he's like, probably not. Because <laughs> if you remember his story, he quit. Yeah, he's a millionaire, he, he, right? He was a multimillionaire and he quit everything to walk around Australia barefoot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I didn't understand at the time. But about a year later, I did because business is tough, man. I, I, I've i been through a lot on the business side these last few years, um, especially with all the attacks. You know, I've been debanked. Really? Yes. I've been canceled on social media. I get death threats. I mean, then there's the whole thing of payroll, making sure everyone's paid. You know, it's it's your mind has to be very engaged in order to be sharp on the battlefield. Yeah. And this is what Vishran is saying. He's saying business is war. Mm. And so how can you become, how can you find your enlightenment on the battlefield <laughs> is what he's saying. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> and it sounds like the Bhagavad Gita right there. You're like Arjuna. He was Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, all right, well, the best I can do is use this as a device for more mindfulness training. Yeah. And so everything that would happen to me along the way, I would just practice and practice and practice and practice. And so this philosophy actually served me very, very well because there's lots of moments to be triggered. There's lots of moments. There's lots of landmines in the field of business. Mm. And yeah, I just, I just kept getting stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And, you know, so it's been a, a real blessing for me, but I tell my people all the time, you know, if they don't, if they don't murder me, I might just end up in the mountains somewhere retired. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> there's only so long I can do this for. Yeah. Right now I'm making a sacrifice mm. to create something to help a lot of people. But yeah, at some man. point, it's got to stop at some point. Yeah. Do you feel that sacrifice is worth it though? Like that's almost part of the shamanic path is you have to sacrifice a little bit of your own will and give it up to the universal will. To give back yeah it's worth it it's worth mm -hmm. it because i always say the best part of my work is seeing the testimonies mm -hmm. it's the best part when when someone because we're live every tuesday and you know people hop on from all over the world and they're like oh dr reese you know my tinnitus is gone and my left hip pain is gone and my migraines are gone and it's like that's what makes it worth it mm -hmm. that they they had this person has taken the teachings and they have begun to heal themselves that's what makes it worth it mm. he and it, it's so priceless it's so priceless amen man and, yeah and so yeah i think it's worth it it just can't last forever and a lot of people get upset when i say that my people sometimes get upset when i say that it's like i don't think there's going to be a 50 year old kevin writing books and talking on videos i just don't think that it's going to happen yeah uh, um you build a monument build a system that other people can run and and then you walk away from it yeah i get that and there's really and only if so I can walk away, if I can walk away with my life, it's a bonus. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you don't have to be sacrificed. Yeah. Yeah. You got to do, um, you got to find the balance between sacrifice and also, um, preserving your own being, saving yourself too. But mm. yeah, you don't, there's only so much you can say. I feel there's only so much you can put out there. And then once it's out there, it's out there. You don't really have to do as much like on a hands-on approach i feel like once you put the information out there it almost has a life of its own that's right and so i stopped taking clients because i was getting attacked and so i didn't want to get hit with the 
practicing without a medical license deal. Mm. So I stopped taking clients and we created a membership. So by having a subscription based entity, people are paying a monthly fee to have access to the information. Mm -hmm. So it's more educational than anything. Mm -hmm. And so that preserves everything that protects everything from the people that want to infiltrate, but it also on top of that preser preserves it because a hundred years from now, God willing, somebody could be in that membership learning how to get rid of their kidney stones. Yeah. Cause the mm -hmm. information's there. It's just there, you know, eat this, eat this, take this supplement, do this, do that. Exactly. So I'm essentially creating a library that yeah. will help people for a long time. It's beautiful, man. Yeah. When you see the internet like that, it's just a giant library, just a giant record keeping system. It changes up how we utilize what the internet is, especially from the creative process. And being able to do that is, uh, yeah, it's priceless and it goes beyond our life in some kind of way. To be able to yeah. do that, leave a mark here, you know, on humanity with your work. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Let me ask you this one. What do you get attacked for the most? <laughs> okay, so I was just writing about this today in my new book. Um, so there's people, uh, there's two types of there's three types of attackers that I've found. The first one is a hater. Of course. And they're just, they're just hating for almost no reason. Haters don't hate. And they're going to be like, you're a quack, you're a snake oil salesman, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. the second one is a debater. So they think that I'm wrong. Yeah. The third kind is the real bad kind. And that's what I call vigilante. Mm -hmm. They think that I'm legit dangerous. Oh, I see. And so mm -hmm. they get on their high horse and they think that they're doing society a service by trying to get rid of me. And so those are the people that report me to social media or they make threats. A lot of times I get indirect threats. So, for example, it might be, and I quote, I can't wait till someone puts a bullet through this guy's head. That's crazy. Right? Or I'm going to, and I quote, I'm going to see to it that this guy never spreads misinformation on social media again. So these are what I call vigilantes. And they get on their, you know, they put on their fake police uniform and they're like, I got to stop this guy. <laughs> yeah. And they become obsessed. And these are the people that, you know, you know, slow things down a little bit. But, but truly, if somebody wanted to come get me, it would be the medical system who can just hire a hitman. I mean, it's not, it's not hard. Yeah. They're, they're, uh, they have the money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I feel as though that is more likely to happen if you get to a certain amount of popularity. Yes. The more targets you're going to have on your head from the yes. people that have money to lose, essentially, and influence to lose. Yeah. So I think the more popular you're going to get, uh, the more it's going to happen, unfortunately. And you already know that. Yeah. <laughs> and it's going to happen soon, too, even more, because... My TikTok and my Facebook are growing like crazy. The Instagram doesn't grow. I don't know why. The Instagram's but, weird. So the Facebook and the TikTok are growing 50 to 60,000 new people a month. Mm. That's a lot of new people coming on, being mm -hmm. introduced to me and Head to Toe Healing. Yeah. And, you know, it's only a matter of time before we start hitting millions of followers. And then from there, it's exponential. It's yeah, not going to stop. I mean, it's it's obvious it's not going to stop because it keeps going and going and going and going and going. And so 
it's my responsibility to be a visionary and think ahead in exactly. order to provide and protect for not just me but for my whole team because they're 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 making the sacrifice too mm. by hanging out with me you know what i mean <laughs> yeah i guess i am too right here <laughs> so okay. you know it's um it's an interesting little adventure you know yeah. it's not it's not it's not like being a plumber you know <laughs> yeah right it's not your regular day job. I feel that. But like you said, it's an adventure. The plumber might not feel that sense of adventure, the hero's journey, right? And that, I think, is another thing that is priceless when one approaches this, uh, let's say, sacrificial lifestyle, is that sense yeah. of like, you know, like you get up in the morning, you have a will to live, you have a purpose, like you're doing something right in the world. Not that plumbers aren't doing something right. Shout out all the plumbers that, <laughs> that take care of our plumbing. But I'm just saying like what you're doing is very virtuous. And I think that is um, something to hold special in your being, you know, in this incarnation, what you're really doing is something special, man. And that adventure, I think is something that is worth it. As we spoke of before, it's like, you know, we sacrifice so we can live a life that is worth it. And uh, yeah, I can imagine you wouldn't want to live any other way, right? You wouldn't want it any other way at this point, maybe a yeah, little I bit more peace, a little less death threats. But I think what comes with the adventure is the death threats. Yeah, no, the, the only issue, honestly, is, is money. Mm -hmm. Because if the, if the fame, if the fame goes higher than the finances, oh, yeah, exactly. then you don't have the money to get the proper security. Yeah. So mm -hmm. as it stands right now, in order to have proper security, you're looking at anywhere from 50 to 100 grand a month. That's crazy. Wow. So <laughs> that's yeah. another level of of being rich. Yeah. And I you know, we're just not doing numbers like that yet. Um but yet the fame is growing. So that's a little awkward situation like I was downtown West Hartford the other day and um you know walking and this woman recognized me and she's having dinner with her husband or boyfriend or whatever and she she jumped right up oh my god it's you blah, blah, blah. she just left her man right there and so i'm not worried about her i can feel the love but i'm like what about your guy you just left your guy and he's probably like what are you doing <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know because it's not i'm not super famous where the whole street is gonna be like oh my god dr reese but it's just this one person but the 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 man that she's sitting down to have dinner with, you got to look at it from his perspective. Exactly. Yeah. And he's like, why is my lady running over to this guy all excited? <laughs> and so now that puts me into a little position with the husbands and the boyfriends and the this <laughs> and the that. <laughs> yeah, that's the power of truth right there. <laughs> So it's it's happening more and more. The social media is starting to bleed out into into um, real life, and so I get recognized at you know Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, and things like that. You know the high end grocery stores, and this mm -hmm. could happen anywhere in the world. The social media is so powerful. Yeah, you never know who's holding a knife or who's holding a gun. Yeah, no, no, yeah, you that's really wild, don't. Man. You really don't. And, you know, somebody could just walk up to you and just be like, I, what you're saying is wrong. And I mean, it could be a whole thing, you know? Mm. So it's an adventure. <laughs> it's an adventure to say the least. <laughs> oh, man. Well, hey, man. Well, I appreciate you um, approaching life in that way and kind of just knowing what you're putting yourself through but you still do it you still go through it you know and uh yeah that's awesome that you do that man i uh i don't know we need more people like that you know to almost um what's the word i'm looking for realize there's something greater than your life in some kind of way like uh, to live for something else other than just yourself like you're right you know you're you're living for others in some kind of way as you said, the testimonials speak for themselves. Like you're, yeah, you know, they're the best, man. They're the best. That's what we do this for, man. I'm telling you, the uh, 
our scoreboard is based off of those video testimonies. That's cool. That's how we know we're doing something, and, and that's what makes it worth it. That's what makes the death threats worth it. That's what makes, mm. you know, getting debanked. Just imagine getting a letter in the mail saying, get your money out in seven days. That's pretty wild. What yeah. was that over? I think I asked you that question, but is there is it too much to go over within no, our talk it, here? No, it's just, the letter just said you violated our policies. That's it? Just That's nothing it. specific? Okay. Nope. It was generic and short and swift. Mm. And at the bottom of the letter, it didn't have a name. It just said, sincerely, the bank. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. Was this during the vaccine era? No, it was just last March. Wow. Yeah, man. And this whole system that you're fighting against, it's all almost like one entity. You know, you could look at it as the banking system and the healthcare system. And it's really, it's all one group, you know, and they're calling the shots and they have the control yeah. over all of us at the end of the day. Um, I mean, we still have the control. We still definitely have sovereignty here. You just got to you just got to pick your battles and play a sort of 5D chess with it, you know? There's more of us than there are of them. Exactly. It's just most people are kind of asleep to everything. That's what it is. You're asleep until you get attacked, you know? You're asleep because we're so comfortable. But if more people were going through what you go through, we'd be way more aware and way more um, willing to change the systems that we live under. We're just a little too comfortable at this point. Or maybe it's just an illusion of comfort, but still. Right. Yeah. Yeah, man. Wow. This is uh, this is a different talk. I appreciate you coming on here and uh, spreading information like this with me and anybody that's listening. This is pretty cool. Hmm. I um, appreciate the time. man. Yeah. I don't even know where I feel like we just touched the tip of the iceberg here, but we're already about 52 minutes in. And, well, we could uh, do a, we could do a part two somewhere down the line. <laughs> I think we should. Yeah, I feel like we just like this is a good introduction though to each other. And where are you from? Where you. are you located? I live outside of Boston. Oh, you're not that far. Yeah, you're in Connecticut, right? Yeah, Hartford, Connecticut, man. I could have just drove and did this in person. Maybe that would be part two. I got a whole <laughs> studio here. That'd be awesome. Yeah, okay. I'm already excited. <laughs> this is studio. great, man. Yeah. Um, wow. Okay. So yeah, I think we can probably start to wrap it up. You know, I don't want to go off on any tangents and drag this out and and drag any more time into this thing than we already have. But I think this was an awesome summary of who you are and what your mission is and where you all came from. Um, do you have anything else you want to say, though, and get off your chest before we wrap this up? Just did. <laughs> that's it? You want to keep it? That's keep it. it. The silence. That's the all. Silence. Know. That's all it. No. <laughs> Truly, it. it's all in the silence. Isn't that what your teacher said? That's what he said. Yeah, that's what he said, man. Still haven't seen him, heard him. I don't know where he is. He could not even be alive for all I know. I have no idea. That's so poetic. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Well, much love to you, Dr. Reese, for coming on here. And uh, keep doing your thing, man. Keep up the great work. And that's it. I'm excited Thank for you. part two. When that comes, but until then, I wish you all the best. Part two coming soon. Thank you. <laughs> peace and love to you, man, and peace and love to everybody that listened this long. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>